It has already begun. The days of just being comfortable, of just being in church, I went to church, yeah, I read, I read my Bible, I, is not enough anymore. If you are not spiritually challenged to mature and to grow in the things of the spirit, you are no longer laying. Where there are still waters and green grass. It's drying up and you're not noticing. A great thirst must begin to develop in you now. Amen. Somebody is not listening to me. You see, many of you are thinking that all the things that are happening in the world is because the devil is doing it. No, it's not. These are signs of the end time. It's God doing it. God said, I am sending a famine, meaning there are people who have been posing, serving God halfway. I am going to take even the little I gave. I'm going to distribute it in different places which are far out of reach where I have placed the ones I want for that time. That now, even though there is churches every corner, you enter it and you realize it's just a valley of dry bones. But that will never happen in Revelation Church. Amen. If you enter as dry bones, yeah. the breath of God will enter you. Yeah. Flesh will come upon you. Yeah. And God will not only make you alive, but God will turn you into an army. Yeah. Yeah. Sit, sit, sit for two seconds. Sit for two seconds. So understand this. Understand this, and I pray that this enters you by the Spirit of God. The thirst has come. The hunger has come. But the world is still eating physical bread and drinking water that keeps them thirsting and keeps them hungering. Keeps them in deep hunger. But the Lord has given us a solution. The Lord has given us a solution. Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. For they shall be filled. You see, when you are a child of God by the Spirit of God, you don't wait for the hunger of the Word or the thirst of the Holy Spirit. Your desire for Him daily, Rabba Shatabahaya, it keeps you expanding. It keeps you. Let me, let me look for somebody I can speak to. God is promising that if you hunger for it, I'll give it to you. He said, don't wait for famine. Don't wait for tragedy to happen to run to Jesus. Prophet Lovey may not be there. There was a time that it was easy to access me. I'm no longer as accessible as I used to be. Even if I want to, I can't. And I'm not saying I'm the only man of God. There are other great men of God that God has risen. But I'm speaking about myself. I'm telling you the truth. It is not how it is. Where, oh, we have this problem. Let's just go. You will lay hands and pray, which God does over and over again. But it is becoming more difficult 
And God never called me for you to depend on me. He called me so that you, I can show you him. Amen. So that you can depend on him. Amen. That is why I spent so much time teaching you the mysteries of the spirit. So that you yourself may be the one that rivers of living waters. Amen. Springs of living waters. Amen. Can flow from to change men and women around you. Somebody shout fire. Fire. So hear me by the spirit of God. Hear me. Hunger for the revelation of the Lord Jesus. You see, the Holy Spirit does not come to reveal anything else except Jesus. Yes, the Lord himself said that. He said it like this. He says, and the spirit will come and take of me and give to you. The Holy, Spirit's, the Holy Spirit reveals the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus reveals the Father. Are you listening to me? The Holy Spirit reveals the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus reveals the Father. When you look at the scriptures, you see the first person you see is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit starts the wave. He reveals the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus points us to the Father. The Holy Spirit comes back. He started there. It's Some of you still didn't get it. So understand this. Begin to hunger genuinely for the things of God. You see, Paul said, you have been drinking milk. It's time to grow. What is milk? I, I can't sin. That's obvious. It's called being a Christian. Not sinning is called being a Christian. You shouldn't. Yeah, I'm just going to pray more. Yeah. It's called communication with your father. Duh. It's normal. It's nothing special. I pray for eight hours. Eh. I talk to God all day. So what did he say to you? If you didn't hear anything back, you're not talking to him. You're talking to yourself. Mm. Come on. We need to stop getting this... Uh, emotional trophies to ourselves. It's foolishness. Be truthful. I just talked to God all day. Wow, what did he say to you? Uh. So you're having a monologue with the king of the universe who has the plan of your life in his hands. Who knows your tomorrow? Who knows the people around you but he didn't tell you anything? Now, another fool will cut this and say, you see, he said, don't talk to God all day. I never said that. I said, don't fool yourself if you're thinking you're talking to God all day and he never spoke back to you. Prayer is the art of communion, speaking with God. When the Bible says, pray without ceasing, people mean think it's like, rabba daba daba shaka daba, every day, every day, every moment. No, that's not what it's saying. Being conscious of God is communion with God. Amen. It's called praying in the spirit. Amen. Praying in the spirit is not only praying in tongues. It's an umbrella term. That is why the Bible says God is seeking those who will worship him in spirit. Meaning there is a worship you sing hallelujah. And there is a worship nobody hears any sound. But in the spirit, you are singing the most beautiful Amen. worship song yeah. that can ever be heard in heaven. Come on. 